Hello again, lovely painter people, and yet another day of coronavirus lockdown. Welcome to the studio here in Northumberland. Today, I'm gonna to do an acrylic painting, and it's my local beach, which hopefully I will be on tonight, because the things have been lifted. Um, this is a, a fairly small canvas, 12 by 16, this one, and I've just put a pre stain on of raw sienna, which is now good and dry. Doesn't need to be perfect, doesn't need to be totally flat, just a pre-stain, just get, it, get rid of the white. And all I've done for the drawing so far is a straight line there, bang, that's it. Simple as that. The paints I'm using, <laughs> not that you could tell out of this one obviously, um, a System 3 paints, Dale Rowney, System 3 acrylics, lovely thick yummy colours. And Stay Wet Palette, I always say it, and at the risk of repeating myself, if you haven't got a Stay Wet Palette, you are wasting a heck of a lot of paint because acrylic dries quickly in your pal palette. These will keep them moist and ready to paint for weeks. The only one I've topped up here again is my white, my titanium white. The rest, they've all been in there about a week. And as you can see, they're all lovely and still moving and ready to paint with. And all you've got, you've got a film underneath which you wet, you put that on top, then you squeeze the paint on there, then when you've finished at the end of the day, just put the lid back on. It'll keep them all nice and moist. Now, time for a sky wash. I'll just get rid of that bit of green. Time for a sky wash. And with my one and a half inch flat brush, the brushes, by the way, are Aquafine brushes, watercolour brushes, Dale Rowney Aquafine. Fabulous brushes, and they'll stand a lot of abuse. As I said, these are for my watercolours, but also they're for my acrylics. One and a half inch flat wash brush. And that's titanium blue, sorry, it's not titanium blue. It's cobalt blue and titanium white. There's lots of different whites in acrylics. It can be very confusing. Stick with one white. And titanium white is a good standalone white, but also it's a good mixing white. So far less confusing, just stick with one, or I do anyway. Titanium white and blue, quite a lot of blue, quite a lot of white, sorry, into the blue. Now, as I'm going further down, I'm going to start and add a little bit more white into the mixture. Like so. And a bit of something else whatever that may have been that got on the edge of my brush. And again, a bit more white. Coming all the way down to that line that I drew, my horizon line. Just make sure that you're filling that canvas. And here and there, I shall leave bits of the pre-stain showing through here and there. And that kind of like gives a nice background to the canvas. There's a bit of line on it. Coming down to that line that I drew. Now, it's just got lighter as it's come further down. And in some circles, posh circles, it's a graduated wash. What it means is it gets lighter as it comes further down. Now, I'm going to wash my brush out well. Squeeze it out between my fingers. And now just with titanium white, good big clump of titanium white there. Let's have some big bits on here. Daub, there's your technical term. Can't go without technical terms. Bring this a little bit further down here. A little bit of blue shine through in between there. Don't fiddle about too much with the sky wash. A bit there. Now, that blue and white mix that I've just finished with, I'm going to wash my brush out well again. 
And into that blue and white mix, I'm going to put a tiny touch of Payne's Grey. There's a bit of that in there as well. It looks a mess. It'll be fine. <laughs> he said, hopefully. Down here. Now, out of that mess, make clouds. So I've finished with the brush now, just with my finger, look. Smoothly roll the top of the clouds. And as I come down to this dark bit, smooth the dark into the white. That way you gain a bit of cloud shadow as well. Every now and then, I'll wipe my finger. <laughs> That's why I've got a smock on. Smooth again here. And you've got quite a bit of time to play if you want with this, but don't hang around too long with this guy. Now it starts to come together. moving all the time and you can have any shape you want really and this works with all the colors even if you're going with a really dark sky I'll use the same way of doing it getting with my finger Back to this one here and get rid of the dark there Now you see how effective that is for a sky. And this is digital art. <laughs> oh, I amuse myself all the time. Bit more of that. Don't like that bit. Get rid of that. And every now and then just stand back and have a look. See how it's looking. Because when you're on top of a canvas or a piece of paper all the time when you're up close. You don't actually see it properly. Stand back and have a look. That's why I like working from an easel. And I think that will more or less do for this guy. And I'll leave that for, a five, for five minutes or so. Now, my sky isn't dry by any means. You can still see a gloss to it. You can still see it sparkling in the wet bits. Um, but it's dry enough for me, to, for me to be able to do the rest of my drawing. So I've got the start of a sand dune here, coming down like so. And that will kind of look like just merge into the beach eventually. Just a very squiggly line. And here are the sand dunes as they go off into the distance. There's one. There's one further away. And here's where the sea comes into the beach. And this place is actually about two miles from my house here in Northumberland. And it's a beach called Drury's Bay, my nearest beach and it's miles of golden sand and hardly any people. And that's it, drawing done. Now I can just carry on with the painting really. As I say, the sky's still wet, but unlike, unlike watercolours, of course, if I paint this bit in here, because it's acrylics, it's not going to bleed up into the sky, so there's nothing to worry about. And if it does, you just make it thicker. Um, acrylics, I think, is probably the most versatile medium there is, because you can paint it good and thick and chunky, almost like an oil painting on canvas, 
or you can paint it really thin and wishy-washy, almost like an, a, a watercolour. But I, what I would say for that, if you're going to paint it like watercolour, paint it on your watercolour paper. And I use £140 Langton Rough watercolour paper for my acrylics on paper. Um, but he's so forgiving because if you make a mistake, just paint over it. So easy to use. But back to the canvas here, back to the palette, sorry. And the brushes I used, I've used, I'll tell you something about those. As I said, these are Aquafine brushes and they're my, they're my watercolour brushes. I've got the same set for painting watercolours as well. That's a one and a half inch flat. That's a three quarter inch flat, which I'm going to use for the majority of this painting now. A number eight round and a number four rigger, and that's it. That's all the brushes I use, a round and a rigger. And as I say, they're watercolour brushes. So now, everything I use, by the way, is Dale Rowney, all the quality stuff. Been around for centuries, Dale Rowney, 1700s they came out. Now I've got a little bit of the blue and the grey mix that I used in the base of the clouds there, with a touch more blue into it. Hardly any water in the brush, it's just a damp brush. All I'm doing, I'm just filling that bit in to start with. That's a long way off, you don't want detail in it. With the sharp edge of my three quarter inch flat brush. There, that's the first distant bit of headland done. Don't need to fiddle with that. Now, a little bit of Hooker's Green. Yes, I use Hooker's Green in my acrylics, just like I do with my watercolours. But just like in the watercolours, never use it by itself, always mix it. I've got Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna here. There. As a mixer, it's fabulous by itself. It's very garish and unnatural. While I'm doing that, pop a bit on the top of that sand dune in the distance with the corner of my wash brush this time. Now start and drag it down a bit. Just pulling down. that one a little bit, just to merge the two in a little bit. Now a little bit of raw umber and titanium white. Raw umber again, it's the only brown I carry. So if I take my raw umber by itself, there, nice, nice brown. Put a touch of blue into that. I've got sepia. Put a touch of burnt sienna into the sepia mix. I've got Van Dyke brown. Take raw umber and burnt sienna together, I've got burnt umber. This time I'm putting white into the raw umber. There. And that's going just underneath that green here and there. Sharp edge at the bottom. And up into the green a bit. So, so easy. A bit over here. And up to this other sand dune in the foreground. Now, a little bit of this a lovely colour. Deep violet. Or as I call it, violent violet. It's very strong. I don't have too much of it. A bit of that. And a bit of paint grey. Yeah. What I'm going to do with that is have a little bit where the grass here, sorry, the grass here comes down to the sand. I'm going to put a little bit in between, just with the corner of my brush. Like so. 
take it up into the green a little bit. And a little bit on the bottom. Now, clean damp brush. And all I'm going to do is smooth it out a little bit. Wipe it on my frock. It just adds a little bit of shadow into the dunes. And also makes the grass, sorry, the grass, sit down onto the sand underneath it. Now let's have a little bit of light on those in the form of Naples yellow. As I say, these Sis, uh, Dale Rowney System 3 acrylics, they are just so usable. They're lovely, yummy colours and go on really nice and creamy. A bit more there, a bit on here. Again, clean damp brush. Don't go mad with the Naples yarn on that. Just soften out up there. Get a bit of sunshine on the top of those dunes. And I've just dipped my hand in the paint. That'll be right. <laughs> I'm messy. There. I'll leave that now. Now that I've finished with that, actually I'm saying now I've finished with that, I'm not quite sure that I have. I don't like that bit, it looks a bit like a sausage. I'm just gonna change the shape of that bit. There, that's better. I can live with that now. If you don't like it, change it. Yeah, that's better. Just that little bit in the middle I didn't like. Now, the mix for the sea. And what I've got here is the cobalt blue, because that's the colour of my sky. A little bit of Payne's grey. And some hooker's green. A bit more hooker's green. Yeah, that's better. And I'm going to, this will be fairly dark to start with, but I'm going to put some light on top of it afterwards. So, I've got no water in that brush, it's just a damp brush. It was damp from the bucket. Now what I'm doing, starting off in the distance there, on the top line, just with a sharp edge, about there. With the sharp edge of my flat brush. Carefully coming across there. All the way underneath that distant headland. Like so. Now, lay the brush on more. Don't start and leave waves. If this were watercolour, I'd be leaving white bits now for waves. Which will paint the waves in afterwards. quarter inch brush. There. Now I'm going to wash that brush out well and before I go any further a bit of this sky colour, the white and the blue and put a little bit of that in here look, dragging it downwards. Now, it's important that that is dry before I go over it. I'm going to put a bit more white in this as well, I think. Wash that, clean that out. Looks odd at the minute, but it'll be fine. A bit more white. Now, 
just leave that to dry now. A bit more there. And a touch there. And all I'm doing with that is I'm reflecting the sky, more or less, in the bit of water that's coming in onto the beach there. That wet bit between sea and sand. But as I said, that needs to dry a little bit before I go any further with that area. But that doesn't mean to say I've got to stop painting. All it means is, well, that bit's dry and somewhere else. So a little bit of white. And I've got a little bit of water in that brush this time. And what I'm doing is lightening the sea here and there. These are not waves, not yet. A little bit there. And a bit down here. Wash the brush out of it and just smooth in any areas where I don't want sharp edges, like there. And also this bit down here. It's settled a little bit, it's not dry, but it has settled a little bit. Oh no, it's a stroke over. Very, very lightly. So, now, wash the brush out well again. And with a clean, clean damp brush, and quite a chunky bit of white on the edge of this one. Chunky bit, that's another technical term for you. It's like all this plain air business. There's lots of technical terms. Plain air. Sorry, I'm going out on plain air. I don't do on plein air, I paint outdoors. <laughs> I'm from Yorkshire, I'm not French. Now, a few little bits there. A few bits in here. Now obviously I want to keep this white, so if I'm picking up the wet paint underneath it, just keep dipping in, keep it white. few bits across here. Keep dipping into the white. I'll have a little bit of white in between the base of that headland here and the sea. And a few bits there. Now it starts to come together. This one's not a difficult painting. It's all done really, well, the majority of it, with two big brushes. And no fiddling about. So I don't get too tight about something like this. Now, I'm going to wash the brush out well. And where I've just put the bigger bits of white, some of them, I'm going to go underneath them with a little bit of dark. So it's back to that C colour there that I used, but I'm going to put a little bit more Payne's grey into it. There. There. And underneath some of those bits, I'm going to drop in a little bit of dark, just to capture the turn of a wave, or help give the impression of a turn of a wave. dabbing on with the sharp of my three-quarter inch brush. Wash the brush out. Squeeze out. And I'm just going to leave that to settle for five minutes. 
Now I'm still with my three quarter inch wash brush and I've got raw umber again and white, titanium white. There, like that. Not like that, just like that. And all I'm doing with that is going over here for the beach. Drury's Bay, like I say, it's such a lovely place. And you hardly ever see any people there. And if you do see people, they're about a quarter of a mile away. <laughs> such a fabulous place to go. Good for the soul, bit of wind in your face. And again, round that reflection. And I'm leaving a little bit of the raw sienna showing through here, and they can just see lighting up, lighting through. And filling in down there. A bit more raw into the mix at this stage, I And a bit more raw into the raw umber into the mix here and there, just for a few touches, just with the sharp edge of the brush. Taking that into the reflective bits. Just dabbing on with the sharp edge of the brush. So now it starts to become reflection of the sky. Such a simple effect without fiddling about too much. You mix all of that. A little bit more white to go here and there into that area, but not just at this second. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. But actually, as I'm looking at the sky, at the water as it's drying, I'm just going to put a little bit more blue just there. Just blue, cobalt blue. A bit in there. Yep, like that. Don't want too much blue. This is not the Mediterranean, it's Northumberland. <laughs> yeah, that's better. A little bit there. Cool. Now I've got a little bit of titanium white, still with the three quarter inch brush. Actually, I don't know if you know this story. I've used, I'm gonna put the paint down a second. Look at me, Gail, look at me. Gail's my camera person. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I've, I've used a three quarter inch wash brush, flat wash brush, ever since my days at art college. I went to Lincoln College of Art in 1973. 70s at art college. <laughs> I don't remember anything about painting. I was drunk for three years, it was lovely. Um, but I used to use a three quarter inch flat wash brush there. I've always used them. And in the late 70s, when I was a starving artist, um, I used to do miniatures with a, one of those, not that, but a brush that size. And uh, when I say miniatures, I mean the size of a celebration postage stamp. These things were tiny. And I'd do a strip of eight in front of the, the telly at night. And I'd get a strip of masking tape in watercolour. I'd get a strip of masking tape there, strip below, several slips downwards. So I'd squared off eight tiny little squares. One big brush, bang, eight skies. Take out a different cloud in each one. Bit of squiggly on the bottom, you've got a miniature. <laughs> and these things were so small, I couldn't sign them. 
So I used to just put CME in one corner. No name, just CME. And I used to flog them to this geezer on there for market for £1.50 each. I think it was the 70s. And he used to frame them up and sell them on his market store for £3.50 each. And it's about probably a dozen years ago now. I went to a very posh art gallery in London to an opening night. Who shall be nameless. Um, and in the corner I saw this picture this size. And I thought, my word, that looks familiar. And when I went up close, it had a big, heavy, ornate gilt frame with a huge wide mount, and in the middle, this tiny little picture. And, like I say, there was no name on them. It was just CME. So, it was, it was a CME from Nesbury Market for £1.50. And it had a price tag of £396. And a red dot, some mug had bought it. <laughs> but when I read the card on the side, I died in 1836. So, yes, I'm still looking well on it, I think. But this guy said to me, can I help you, sir? I said, yep, what's the name of your solicitor? We're going to do business. And we did. Now, that's right long enough. So back to this one. Again, with a little bit of white, I'm just going to reinforce some of those waves there. There, that's better. Because it's dried now. A bit there. A bit more there. Yeah. Now, still with white, where the C ends and this bit starts, a few bits of white there, look. Like so. A little bit there. And that secures that place as a reflection. Now for once, I'm going to change to my rigger brush, number four rigger brush. Again, it's an apple fine brush. And I've got a little bit of page break to start with. And we'll just have a blob about there. There's a blob. Make that a bit stronger. Now, let's have a little bit of, I don't know, what colour shall I use? I'll have green with burnt sienna. That's a country type jacket colour. Green and burnt sienna. So with my rigger brush, a little blob there. Obviously, my seat's still wet. Keep dipping in. Now again, back to a bit of paint spray. Still with the rear brush. And repeat that there. Still with Payne's Grey, we'll have a blob there, little blob inside it, tail there, we'll have two of those. Inside it, a tail, and a couple of sticks down. A Frank and Bert. <laughs> bit of reflection, a bit of reflection there, and a bit of green, that green mix underneath for the reflection there. And that's Frankenberg with me. 
so simple to put people in. Because at that kind of distance, you don't need detail. They're just blobs. Bigger blobs and smaller blobs. Just tapping on with a little bit darker here now. A bit more Payne's grey. Yeah. Very, very simple. But like I said, do not fiddle. Now, to finish with all this bit down here, so it's back to my big three quarter inch brush. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of Naples yellow in the far distance there on the beach. Just a few touches here and there, look, like so. A little bit there. And again, clean down brush and just merge in and smooth out a little bit. It's getting a bit of light on the beach over there. Just helping with that curve as it goes round. And now it's time for the big sand dune down here. So raw sienna, bit of that, nice and strong. Quite a few colours going in this, bit of raw sienna first. Cover over my daubs that I got the paint on my hand from. Bringing this down to the beach colour. Now, a little bit of raw umber. <laughs> and that very handily got rid of those colours. Now, into that, I'm putting a little bit of titanium white. Under here. merging colours in. Looks a bit messy to start with, but there's a lot of grass going to go on there. Sorry, grass going to go on there. Back to a bit of raw umber, mixed in with the white there. Into the bottom of the canvas behind the easel. A bit more raw umber, that's better. Now I've definitely got rid of those daubs. Just basically bashing colours on, lots of colours. I have a little bit of burnt sienna now. Little bits of that here and there. Which also helps to warm up this foreground area slightly. Like I said, I've had lots of fabulous feedback during this lockdown bit because I've, I've tried to make as many YouTube videos as I can. And when I'm not making full size videos like this one, I'm doing little quick sections in between for YouTube as well. Um, and people have realized what I'm doing. And I've had such fabulous feedback thanking me for keeping them occupied during this difficult time. Hopefully it'll be over soon. Now, that'll do for that. There's gonna be some shadow in that afterwards. But just with a clean damp brush now, look, I'm just going to soften in there. Merging colour slightly here and there. Now I'm going to have a few different tones of grass, sorry, grass in this lot as well. Starting off with hooker's green and a lot of raw sienna. So a bit of hooker's green there, look, and a lot of raw sienna. And I'm just flicking up, look. Like I said, there's going to be various tones of green in this. But still with the same three quarter inch brush, push it in, flick it up. Look, grass, sorry, grass. A few dabs here and there. Make 
quick hint. Keep dipping in because don't forget the paint's still wet underneath it. At least you can see it's being done in real time because all the paint's still wet. <laughs> we'll fix that. And a few dogs in here, just here and there. Now I'm going for Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna. Remember, that was Hooker's Green and Raw Sienna. Now Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna, all together darker. Yep, quite a bit of Burnt Sienna into that. A bit more Burnt Sienna. And again, a few flicky bits in there. See, totally dark. Leaving some of the under lighter green showing through. See how that cuts this lot further back as well. And again, a few dabs here and there. Now wash the brush out again. Washing that good out, brush out good and solidly, get rid of all the paint from it. Now a little bit of Payne's Grey, but it's Payne's Grey into that green mix that I've just finished with. Remember that was Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna. Now I'm putting Payne's Grey into that look. You dab some of that down here, see how nice and dark and rich that is. Tap on look, bit of the red wine stroke. If I wanted some taller, sharper brushes, grasses, with the sharp of the brush up. See? Now, move that around a little bit. A few flicky bits. of those glasses. Or with that big three quarter inch flat, flat wash brush. And a little bit down there. We're nearly done with this actually. It'll soon be time for a gin and tonic, I mean a cup of tea. <laughs> If I wanted some lighter strokes of grass, grass in between that lot, get my fingernails up, just a few touches here and there. Just scraping with the back of my fingernail. But don't go mad. It's always the same with effective techniques. People, when it comes to a very effective technique like that, people say, God, that's good, I'll have some more of that. And you end up with no grass left, just a load of scraped out bits. Keep your effective technique for a moment. And I think that is just about that. Done. 
What you've seen about the brushes, Aquafine, watercolour brushes really, De La Rowney Aquafine brushes. One and a half inch flat, three quarter inch flat, number eight round, and a number four rigger. The paints I'm using are System 3. Again, De La Rowney System 3 paints. These on my website are £2.70 a tube. They're for nothing. And yet, they're good and thick and yummy. They're lovely paints. And they go on really creamily. It's lovely. I love painting with them. And you can see how strong the colours are. Tone them down. Use quite a bit of white. In fact, I think white is probably the most colour that you'll use. The colour you'll use most of all, should I say. Now, if you're a bit mystified by acrylics, this book has helped so many people. Worldwide. My publishers say it's the best seller all over the world. Um, and it's all about acrylics and it starts you at the very beginning with very simple scenes that could be drawage bay actually from the other side with very simple scenes going through to some quite complex scenes little bits and pieces how to do various bits in the middle there are tracings which you pull out and use either as a reference drawing or using the tracing and then they're all stage by stage so many paintings in there acrylics for the absolute beginner such a useful book everything that i use is on my e-shop charlesevansart.com so the next one i'm going to do will be a watercolor see you soon bye bye